thank you once again for this opportunity to gather this morning. Lord, I ask that you be with me as I deliver the message. You've given, you've given me the scripture. Give me your thoughts, Lord, to preach this message the way you want it preached this morning. Open our hearts and our ears to receive this message, Lord. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Everyone said, Amen. 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 <coughs> So if you remember when I preached a few weeks ago, I was I was in Matthew 14 then, a few verses right before it where uh, the disciples were in the boat rowing and Jesus came walking on the water and Peter walked on the water, then he sunk, then he walked again. And when they get when they get into the boat, they're immediately on the shore. In the land of Genesaret. And it says in our, in our verses today that when they when they arrived, the people besought him. They, you know, they, they came, you know, and they and in Mark, in Mark it says that in Mark 6, it says uh, in verse 56, it says, Whithersoever he entered into villages or cities or country, they laid the sick in the streets. And besought him that I might touch, if it were, but the border of his garment. Yeah. And as many as touched him were made whole. Yeah. So, the, so this is told in Matthew and Mark. Matthew says him. Mark says border. Same meaning. And on the when you read in the Old Testament, the Jewish people on their on their robes, on the border of their robes, they had tassels knotted a certain way and they were blue to show that they were God's chosen people. So Jesus, would, he had these tassels on his robe and the people besought him to be healed. Now let's back up a minute if I may, back up to uh, Matthew 8 where Jesus is in a uh, Another area. This is where uh, this is where Jesus healed the man. There's actually two men who were possessed by a legion of demons, and Jesus healed the men of those demons, cast them out. The demons begged to go into the herd of pigs, if you remember. Jesus said, sure, go. And as soon as the demons entered the pigs, they went down, down the hill, into the river, and drowned. So the men, so the men went into the city and told them what Jesus had done, how he had healed the men, and, and then, so it says, behold, the whole city came out to meet Jesus, but get this, when they saw him, they begged him to depart yeah. from their region. All they could think about was a financial loss from losing all those pigs. Never mind, never mind that he healed this, these demoniacs who were just going crazy and causing a ruckus. Now they're sitting there clothed in their right mind. Never mind all that. It's like, we don't want you here. But in Genesaret, they besought him. They're bringing all the sick they can find, all the sick they know about. They're bringing them, bringing them to Jesus. Because they had heard about him, they heard about they heard about his healing power, yeah. and they didn't want to they didn't want to yeah. burden him with uh, having to go to each to each person to lay hands on them and you know to be healed. They just they said no. They asked him basically, you know, just let us just let us come by and touch the very hem of your garment, and they knew they would be healed. As I said, they had heard of his healing power and they obviously had heard about the woman with the issue of blood. We read about her in Matthew 9. Had the issue of blood for 12 years. Spent all her money on doctors. They didn't do a thing for her except take her money. And she was left broke and worse off than before. Now when she heard Jesus was in town, 
She went out. There was a great crowd. She went out. Fought through the crowd. I was trying to be very subtle. And she told herself. In Matthew 9, 21, she said within herself, If I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. And as you read, I think, if you read it in Mark, it says she did go and touch him, and immediately her issue was dried up. She was immediately healed. She was made whole. And and though there was a crowd of people pushing us the first time that I preached here at Faith Harbor some five years ago, uh, I did preach. I preached it out of the Gospel of Mark, I believe. I was preaching about Jairus, as you remember, Jairus had the sick daughter. So Jesus was, on, he was on, Jesus was on his way to Jairus' house. And that's when the woman with the issue came and touched him. Touched the very fringe of his garment, the very border of his garment, because she knew that's all she had to do. And as Jesus told her, it was her faith that healed her. Yeah, that's right. So she had faith. Yes, yeah, she had faith. But she was also fulfilling a prophecy that was told in Malachi. Malachi being the last book in the Old Testament, the last prophetic word in the Old Testament. After that, there were some 400 years that went by. But in Malachi 4, verse 2, it says, Unto you that fear my name, shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings. And you shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. You're saying, now wait a minute, Brother Michael. That doesn't say anything about a garment. It says there's healing in his, that says healing in his wings. But you have to know a little bit about the Hebrew language. The Hebrews had fewer words than, say, the Greek. So, one Hebrew word may be used for three or four different things. And in this case, the Hebrew word for wings, which is kanaf, is also used for corner or border. So the scribes and the uh, rabbis of that time, they taught that the Messiah, he would have healing power in the tassels that were attached to the corner of his robe. So when the woman approached Jesus, not only was she believing that she was going to be healed, she was fulfilling this prophecy. She was telling the people, said, yes, I believe this is the Messiah. This is the son of righteousness that was mentioned in Malachi. He's the one who has healing in his wings. He has the healing in the border of his garment. But as we know, it wasn't just just the garment. It wasn't the garment itself that had special powers. It was a man wearing that garment. Yeah, yeah. It was the man, it was the God, Jesus. It was Jesus who provided the healing. <coughs> now, yes, she could have approached him, had her lay hands on him. But she didn't want to, she didn't want to cause a fuss, mainly because she was she was ceremonial, ceremoniously unclean. So as I said, she wanted to just she wanted to just be real subtle, touch him, be healed, be on her way. But Jesus took the time to address her and to, and to calm her fears. Let her know, daughter, call her daughter. Your faith made you whole. Amen. And so all these people in Genesaret.
who also had knowledge of him, whether or not they had read the story in Malachi, we don't know. <clears throat> but when they knew Jesus was in town, it says they sent out into all the country. They went to the city. They went to all the country. They went all as far as they could go. Bring them. Say, hey, Jesus is in town. What a beautiful story of healing in this scripture this morning. Now the scripture, now the scripture here this morning talks about physical healing, but I also want to go into the other aspects of Jesus' healing this morning. He does not just heal physically. He can heal you mentally. He can heal you emotionally. And he can heal you spiritually. There are so many people out there still who are spiritually ill, who have no clue, have no clue that there's something wrong with them. They're going about their daily lives, just as Jesus foretold. You know, they'll be they'll be marrying, be giving in marriage. They'll be they'll be two women at the mill. One of them, they'll be grinding at the mill. One's going to be taken, one's going to be left behind. Right. Why? Because the one is spiritually ill. Those who do not know Jesus as Lord and Savior are spiritually ill. Right. If they have a Savior, it's the wrong Savior. And because they're... And then there are those who think that they're spiritually well, but they're listening. They're listening to the wrong people. They're listening to the wrong preachers because there are preachers out there who are spiritually ill, who are trying to change the gospel, who are trying to add to it or take away from it. Yeah. Preaching another Jesus, preaching another gospel. Well, that Jesus will not, will not heal them. Only the Jesus of the Bible, only the Jesus that I'm reading to you today, the Son of God, only that Jesus will heal you. I love when Brother Terry spoke on that Jesus. That Jesus. Not, not the one, not the one that the Yahoos are preaching about, but that Jesus that's in the Word of God. Yeah. Matthew Henry wrote in his commentary, the healing virtue that is in Christ is put forth for the benefit of those that by a true and lively faith touch him. Christ is in heaven, but his word is nigh us, and he himself in that word. When we mix faith with the word, apply it to ourselves, depend upon it, and submit to its influences and commands, then we touch the hymn of Christ's garment. So when we seek, when we seek Jesus, when we reach out to Him, we're touching the hem of His garment. We're believing that if we if we reach out just the least bit, He's going to answer us. He's going to make us whole. And when we reach out to him, we have to have that expectation. Brother, Brother Middow talked on that. You have to have, you have to come with expectation. Yeah. Don't just, don't just sit idle. The woman with the issue, she didn't just, she didn't just sit at home and it's like, <coughs> well, I know the Messiah's coming one day. Maybe if I just sit here long enough, he'll, he'll, he'll come to me. Everything will be all right. No. She didn't wait. Just as Peter didn't wait when Jesus was walking on the water. He wanted to, he wanted to get out of the boat. He wanted to go to Jesus. Right. I'm not going to wait. The woman did not wait. 
And the people in the land of Genesar, if they did not wait, it's like they got there any way they could because they wanted that touch. They wanted to touch the hem of his garment. When we come to the altar, we're touching the hem of his garment. Amen. That's why the altars were put back in the front where they belong. Right. So people would come, would come up and touch his hem. And as I've told you before, don't ever be afraid to come to the altar. Don't ever be bashful. I make sure when I'm recording, I make sure that the altar is not in the altar is not in view of the camera. So nobody's gonna see you on Facebook. You know, if your hair is just not right. You don't like the shirt you're wearing. I don't want to see me in this shirt. You should always come boldly. Come boldly to the altar. Amber, you can come on up wherever she is. Larry. Oh, Amber. But, um, We should always seek him with whatever is going on, whether it's physical or mental, spiritual. Jesus is there to heal. Amen. And yes, there are. I can think I can think of people who need that emotional healing. Today. Yes. And I know of another who needs mental healing. Needs mental healing, needs spiritual healing. Now I won't get into his story. But it just grieves me when I when I read it on Facebook. Basically having an identity crisis. And not turning to the one who can help him, the one who could heal him and make him whole. And sadder still, the parents are not turning him to the one who can make him whole. We should be eager, just like the one, be eager like the people of Genesaret, we should seek him. Say, Lord, I'm reaching out to you today. I know if I just touch your hymn, if I just touch your hymn today, I'll be whole. Even if it's not immediate, Keep reaching, keep touching, keep seeking, keep asking. Keep that faith. Keep that faith. I ask you to stand this with me this morning. I'm opening up the altars right now. While they look at the praise and worship team play, on social media. I would invite you to come to the altar this morning. If you have a need this morning, if you need physical healing, if you need spiritual healing, if you need emotional healing, if you have any other need, I invite you to come to the altar this morning. Seek Jesus and touch the hem of his garment. Hallelujah.
this morning. Thank you. 